this morning for the word of God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that you've extended to everyone. Thank you for your kindness and your provision that you have made sure that we have food and shelter. Lord, that we have clothes on our back, even though someone may be homeless. There is a shelter that has been provided for them if they so choose to go in. And Father, we thank you for, in the name of Jesus, the kindness, God, that you've been so good to show us in this latter day. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would remember today those in the southern part of Texas as the hurricane begins to roll in and Corpus Christi and along the coast of Texas, we pray for that community and those communities, Father, that you would bless, especially under the pressure that they're already under with the coronavirus outbreak. We pray, Father, for the leadership in that state, for every doctor, for every nurse. Lord, we pray for the governor. We pray for his, his state representative and legislators that the decisions that they will make, Lord, will be beneficial to the lives of those in that state. We pray, Lord, for all of us, all of our country that is impacted by the coronavirus. We thank you, Lord, for those who are recovering. And we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones. We ask, God, that you would comfort the bereaved. Father, remember Mother Gray, Mother Rudolph, Lord, and the loss of family members. We know you're able to do all things. We pray, Lord, that you would remember, Lord, those who are sick in body. Remember in a special way, Lord, continue to touch Mother Stocking. Remember Mother Warren. We pray, Lord, that you remember Mother Boyd. Father, continue to touch in the name of Jesus, Mother Bryant and Mother Stokes. Father, we pray that you would reach your hand out, God. And remember, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Bishop Grayson. Remember in a special way, Lord, Sister Wilkins. Lord, we ask, God, that you would touch them, Elder Turner, Lord. Touch their bodies, those, Lord, who are sick. We pray, Lord, for those... Father, who are, who are fighting the good fight of faith. Remember our diocesan and all of our bishops. Remember all of our suffocant bishops and all of our district elders, pastors, all of our praise team leaders, all of our deacons. Remember, Lord, the church as a whole. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over us today. Father, we pray, God, that you would strengthen, Lord, those, Lord, today that are traveling over the highway. The Lanier family, oh God, watch over them and give them the strength that they need we pray, Lord, that you would uphold, Lord, your people. Remember today, Father, the church, Christ Temple Church as a whole. Remember us, Father, as we strive to deliver your word with simplicity, with power, and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, that your word will fall upon good ground and that men and women might be delivered. Men and women might be helped. For you said in your word, Lord, thy word is truth and the truth shall make us free and so we thank you today lord now touch lord the ear the hearer touch lord their mind to perceive their heart and their will to do and father we ask lord that you would let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight in jesus name amen and amen we certainly give god praise if you will this morning we're certainly thankful to bring you this wonderful lesson this morning i have as always when i uh present these lessons i try to uh, add a little bit to uh, these lessons so that you can engage with them and you can gravitate and grab that word so that you can be stronger and better. And so what I want to deal with this morning is uh, that, uh, number one, uh, that God is planning to bless you in unexpected ways that's the subject matter or the theme that I want to take for this morning, that God is going or planning to bless you in unexpected ways. And I think sometimes people are always looking for God to bless in one way when God is really going to bless in a different way. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And so when we understand this, we want to understand that God does work in unexpected ways to bring his purpose to pass. And I think people use that scripture that God works in mysterious ways. And uh, I oftentimes say, no, it's not mysterious. He just, he's never done something for you that way. Also, people say God is getting ready to do, God is going to do a new thing. I, I oftentimes tell people, he just hasn't done for you what he's getting ready to do. So it's new to you, but he's already done it for someone else. 
a man maybe not in the way that he's doing it for you, but he's done it. If he has healed a body, God has done that before. Amen. It is always new to us because God is doing things to bring about his purpose. And I think it's important that we understand it's his purpose, not our purpose. It is God's purpose. Amen. And so when we understand that God is getting, uh, is he's working to bring about his purpose and he's doing things in ways, to be honest with you, that uh, are unexpected, ways that you are not expecting God to do it. We must under, we must celebrate that fact and we must appreciate the fact that what we're asking God to do that has not been done, that we ought to look at our lives and see if the purpose of God is being revealed. Amen. And so our, our, our focus uh, thought, if you will, go to Second Kings chapter number seven is where our lesson is coming from. Because it, it, when you talk about unexpected, it's something that has to be honest with you. It's something that we have never seen before. Amen. God can do things. For example, uh, he, can, he can heal you, uh, amen, without medication. He can, he can keep you and touch your body uh, through, uh, through the fact of uh, medication. Or he can move things out of the way so you can have access to what you thought you could not have access to. Amen. He can put people in your way. He can, uh, people in your way that seemingly is blocking you, but yet God still blesses you in the midst of that block or in the midst of that, that hindrance. God still blesses you to achieve. Amen. So we look at Second Kings chapter number seven. It is uh, uh, it is a powerful passage of scripture. Uh, it is uh, where Elijah, uh, if you will, is uh, promised uh, that of food and how that there is a battle going on. There is a terror. There is always something because they're in the midst of a famine. They're in the midst of a pestilence. And I'm going to uh, deal with some things just a little differently this morning, if you would allow me to. I'm not going to lift the text out too much, but I'm going to bring to light some things that I hope will help us to understand that in the midst of this pandemic, God is still doing great things. And even though it seems like he's not, I want you to know he is getting his purpose is being fulfilled and his voice is being heard and he's getting his church to respond in a proper fashion. Amen. And so when we look at uh, Second Kings chapter number seven, the Bible lets us know in verse number one, it said, then Eli- Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord uh, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine wheat be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. In other words, he's letting them know that things are getting ready to change. There's going to be an increase in what it costs to to have some of the basic necessities. My sister oftentimes will tell us that we need to certainly be prepared if this does not change. There's going to be shortages in food. Uh, She continues to remind us of this because I can see it and I can understand what she is saying. Because if the workers are sick and they cannot go to work, no different than what we have in California with many of the migrant workers uh, being sick, there's things that are going to die on the vine. There is food that is not going to be picked before it is ripe or when it's ripe, it's actually going to die on the vine. And when that happens, that means costs go up because you have less food. And that study or that, that, that theory of supply and demand, if the supply is low, uh, if the supply is low, the demand is high, the cost is high. And the reality is that those of us that don't have the, the wherewithal to buy whatever we want, sometimes there's going to be some suffering. Somebody ought to shout glory because in the midst of our suffering, God is still on the throne. Amen. And so Elijah is, is here and realizing that there are some cha- challenges 
that are going to be faced. Elijah realizes there's challenges. And so like all of us, we are all faced with challenges today. Amen. No, no different than uh, this week when we kept hearing on the news how that number one, there's two things that are happening. People are going to be evicted. The other thing is, is that uh, they're going to discontinue the the federal uh, uh, $600 in unemployment. And the question is, are people going to be able to survive? And that is a challenge. That is a challenge. And so I, I, I would like to, uh, if you will, jump on soapbox for about 30 seconds. The reality is that some people who got that money didn't deserve to get the money. And the people who should have gotten the money took too long for them to get the money. And so by the time they get the money, they go back to work. Somebody ought to say, thank God that they had a job because it is difficult when uh, people are suffering and the devil has a tendency to deceive folk to take advantage of something that really is not for them. Amen. And so with that being said, this is where Elijah is. Elijah, Elijah is in this place where we're in the midst of a famine. It is difficult. It is costly. Uh, uh, it is it is pressure on all of us. Uh, everybody's affected. I don't care good or bad, rich or poor. Everybody's ex- affected, black or white. All of us are infected or affected by this famine, and all of us are affected by this pandemic. And so, when we look at it, we have to understand that it it does not matter. Everybody's going to have to suffer a little bit. Amen. And then so verse number two says, then the Lord, then a Lord of whose hand the king uh, uh, leaned, answered the man of God and said, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? In other other words, uh, one of the noblemen or one of the rulers asked the question of Elijah. Elisha and asked him and says now if if the Lord uh, uh, if God would make windows in heaven uh, would we have this famine uh, I, I like that I like that because see at least somebody asking about God instead of trying to always get what they want uh, get what they want these people wanted to know if God would open the windows of heaven, would they be in this famine? If God would uh, 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 make a way, would they be in this place? And I want you to understand, here's what uh, uh, Elijah, Elijah said. He said, and he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. In other words, Elijah is telling them here, he says, you shall see this. You're going to see it, but it will not impact you. The reality is, is that that's why God takes care of his people. Amen. God knows how to take care of his people in the midst of famine and pestilence, disease and and, and trauma. God knows how to take care of his people. And so our lesson, if you will, starts around verse number three. And I'm going to read verse three to verse nine. And he says and there were four leprous men. At the, at the entering in the, of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine in the city, the, then the famine is in the city, and we shall, uh, he says, and we shall not only that, we shall die there. And if we sit there here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us fall upon the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp the Syria, of, camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us 
the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they ro arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the other part, other part, uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we might go and tell the king's household. Amen. So let's look at this because I think this is important as we walk through these scriptures. Because this is a powerful text. Because first chapter, verse number three, there are some things that we must take observation of. There are four leprous men who are entering in of the gate. In other words, they are sitting at a gate. And one of the unique things is about Samaria. Samaria was a place or a town, if you will, of rejection. Because it was Samaritans that lived in Samaria. These were people who were half Jews. They were rejected. If you remember what Jesus said to the woman of Samaria, he said, what, what, why are you coming through Samaria? He said, I must needs go through Samaria. He says, why are you here when the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? And so therefore, what you have is a city that has a, has a aura of rejection. What's unique about these lepers, and I want to read something to you. The social manifestation of lepers, of, of course, is really interesting. Josephus talked about them this way. He said lepers were viewed as dead people. They treated them as dead people. They had no existence. They had no life. And I don't know about you, but we're living in a time right now where the dead are starting to rise. Those that people felt were dead and no good. They're rising up <clears throat> and they're becoming, they're living. They're, the people are starting to have to recognize that people are matter. People are important. Amen. Just because uh, of what we might personally believe or what may have been falsely taught, every life is valuable. Every life is important. Amen. And we all know that the Black Lives Matter movement uh, uh, is, is, is on the move because it needs to matter to all of us. It needs to matter to me first as it matters to God. My life needs to matter. The other thing that was interesting about uh, 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 lepers is one, they were dead. Number two, uh, they were made to be completely estranged. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the word estranged because another word for estranged is isolated. Uh, I don't know about you, but it seems like for the last three months or so, uh, there, many people have been in isolation. <clears throat> Sometimes we have to take into consideration some of these, some of the biblical prophecies to help us understand where we are. Because you need to understand that regardless of what we're in, God is planning to bless us in the midst of this thing. He is going to bless us and prosper you in the midst of this. And so Josephus talked about that they were banished. They were estranged from society. They were isolated. They could not be around them. And a couple of other things about them. Their dress was unique. Amen. They wore torn clothes. They shaved their heads and they covered their mouths with a cloth to prevent to prevent the spread of of leprosy. I don't know about you, but I'm on, I, I, I'm going to talk for a minute. I might as well deal with it because everybody running around got something covering their face to stop a disease. Somebody ought to say, man, we are doing it because let me show you something. They believe that leprosy was spread through the air. I ain't going to get no help, but the reality is that's how lepers had to walk around. I just want to let you know something that the time in which we live in, 
God is showing us in this scripture today. When I started reading this and started studying lepers and started looking at the depth of the leprosy and why uh, uh, we always look at it as a sinful thing of being separated. We said this when it talked about their attire, it talks about their heads being shaven. It talks about uh, that to cover their mouths with a cloth. I think all of us today. Or covering our mouths with a cloth, whether it is a, a handkerchief, a t-shirt, a, a turtleneck, or a mask, our mouths are covered. Because, amen, we are, we, we believe and we know that this transmission, now y'all gonna, this is gonna blow your mind, this is gonna blow your mind. Because I want you to understand some God gonna get the glory from this anyway. So in this, watch what else happens. The, the other thing was, is that uh, uh, lepers were required to shout the warning, unclean, unclean. Now, watch this. They didn't have a test. They were the test. They knew what they had. They were to declare that they were unclean so that people would not approach them. Another thing that was lepers could get no closer than six feet to one another. I ain't going to get no help in here. Y'all need to leave me alone. Y'all need to leave me alone. Let me help everybody understand something. Just because we're in a time of pestilence does not mean that God is not going to bless. Just because you feel that you are isolated and can't get into fellowship. You feel as if I'm struggling to keep my mind together. I want you to understand you got to keep your mind on God because God has got a plan to prosper you in this time. Don't let this isolation get to you because to be honest with you, everybody around us is affected. Everybody wears a mask. You don't know who is sick. You don't know who is well. Because everybody is seen as sick. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But the real sickness is not that of coronavirus. The real sickness is sin. Somebody ought to say amen. Because leprosy was, uh, uh, in the New Testament, was a type of sin. It's a type of being in sin. So, therefore, if these men who were leprous were in sin and they had to wear a mask around their mouth and had to stand six feet from anybody else, guess what? That was a sign that they were in sin. You need to check this before we move on. Could it be that we have missed the mark? I ain't going to get no help. I feel like running right now. Should it, could it be that we have not done what we should help us lord forgive us father for not doing what we should have been doing before the pandemic came we should have been praying before the pandemic came we should have been fasting before the pandemic came we should have been using social media before the panic pan uh, pandemic came but guess what because of the pandemic you have yet blessed the church to reach the loss so that people can be saved. I wish I had somebody that would shout glory in here. And so because of this, because of their defilement, amen, they had to stand six feet from anybody. Amen. And watch this. Because of it, there was rejection and isolation. And I just want everybody to know there's not a person that is walking around with a mask that does not reject the person coming at them with a mask because the first thing that you ask yourself is that person infected and if you're walking down the street with a mask and you don't the person coming towards you don't have a mask the first thing you do is move over to get your six feet i ain't gonna get no help in here but i'm gonna talk anyway so i want you to understand that we are repeating what already has taken place and my brothers and my sisters church members saints believers christians we need to figure this out today who we gonna live for who we gonna die for somebody ought to say man and so this watch this so lepers watch this receive public scorn and harsh treatment from religious and social structures of that day 
There was a there, there, there was a rabbi whose name was uh, uh, Peronia. Peronia would say this, and I quote: He say, "When I see lepers." I throw stones at them lest they come near me. Now watch this. There are people today, amen, that have lost their lives because somebody got too close to them. People have lost their lives because someone asked them to put a mask on. People have lost their lives because people refuse to put a mask on. Because the masks associate you with the disease. No different than, watch this, the mask at this time associated people with leprosy. So guess what? That's why I can quote this scripture and say all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But guess what? Thanks be to God for the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of his word and his spirit amen that pulled us out of darkness into light somebody ought to clap their hands and give God some praise if you will and so then watch what watch what I'm saying because these four men who were leprous who had to stay six feet from anybody that was not uh, uh, leprous that had to cry out and and own the fact that they were unclean who had to isolate themselves Amen. Because they were unclean. Amen. These men who were dead, they sat there and they asked themselves, why sit here until we die? The word why means there must be a response. There must be some options in this why. You cannot, and please understand, you cannot ask why without an option. Anytime you ask why, you ought to have an option. The option is I go through it or I come out of it or I leave and walk away. So they said, why sit here and we die? Watch what he says in verse number, in verse number, in verse number four. Verse number four is quite clear. They said this. They said, if we say we will enter the city, watch this. Then the famine is in the city. Watch this. It doesn't matter if we sit here and die, but if we say we're going into the city, guess what? The famine is in the city. If I say I'm going outside, if I say I'm going back to work, if I say I'm going back to school, guess what? The virus is in the air. It doesn't matter. I have to put the mask on to show that guess what? I am just as affected by it as everybody else. Somebody ought to say amen. The virus is not sin. But guess what? The virus is the equalizer. To let the saints know and let the sinner know. The saint ought to know, thank God I'm saved. And the sinner ought to say, I need to be saved. And the saint ought not judge the sinner. Because all of us are affected by the same thing. And who can tell who is saved or not because we all got a mask on. Am I doing okay, Brother Andre, back there in the sound room? Am I doing all right, Elder Lincoln? Am I doing all Because, see, this is the great equalizer. This is the great equalizer. Everybody is subject now. And everybody don't believe that in the midst of this, God's got a plan to prosper you. God's got a plan to bless you. And I want you to know something. He ain't blessing everybody. He's blessing his people. Look at what he says. Look at what they say. They said the famine is in the city. Then he says this. And we shall die there. They come to the conclusion they're going to die. They got this dying thing made up. They got this dying thing figured out. You know, that's a good thing, right? We just going to die. We just going to die. We got this dying thing figured out. Death is coming to all of us, right? So we ought to just be grateful that we know that we're going to die. The question is, how are you going to die? Amen. I'm not trying to die outside of Christ. I'm not trying to die in my own will or purpose. I want to die in Christ. Because the Bible says, blessed are they that died the Lord for henceforth they do rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I don't want to die outside of the will of God. I don't want to die outside of the body of Christ. Then the next thing they ask is another question says, well, uh, if we do we sit here and die? Because if watch this, if we sit still here, we die also. 
There's no way. There's no way out. So now they make a decision. So verse number verse number four says, now, therefore, come and let us fall upon the host of the Syrians. He said, well, <clears throat> let's go on and cast ourselves on these Syrians. Let's go on in there and let's do what we going to do. Let's just go on in. Guess what? They got a famine. It's OK. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in, we're going to die. So let's just go and cast ourselves on the Syrians. And he says, if they shall save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. They got this dying thing already. Got it in the bag. They just comfortable with the fact that doesn't matter what direction they go, they're going to die. If they sit there, they're going to die. If they go in, they're going to die. It doesn't matter. Death is inevitable. And I want to get this through everybody's mind. Death is inevitable. Whether it's by the hands of the Syrians or by famine, death is coming. It's on the way. It's knocking. It's not knocking at your door. It is on the way. You cannot stop it. So the question becomes, do you allow what is going on around you to stop you from moving forward in Christ? Do you allow what is, is impacting our world, impact your mind to think that staying isolated is the best thing for you? The reality is, and the, the word of God is, no, it is not. Let me tell you why. If you look at verse number five, verse number five says this. And they arose. They rose up in the twilight. In other words, they, 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 they got up. They said we can sit at the gate and die or we can go into the city and die. They made a decision that they were going to get up and they were going to go into the city. You need to make your mind up. If you want God to prosper you, you have to make your mind up that you're going to go forward with him. You're going to go on in to the, go, walk through this pandemic, walk through this pestilence. You're going to go through this with joy, regardless of what it looks like. You're going to do what you're supposed to do and go through it, not with fear, but with joy, with expectation that God is going to take care of you. And if God chooses not to, then guess what? We just going to die. And this is what they did. Verse number five, they just decided. They said we rode, they rose up in the twilight to go up unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost points, parts of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. I, I, I like this because I want you to understand something that the very fact of their their courageous decision to go, that was courageous. They, they, they had to come to a point to denounce all fear, or all disappointment, all, all failure, any concern about death. They had to let it go and they had to make that decision. And I just want everybody to know decisions have got to be made. They got to be made in this hour. Whether or not we're going to go forward, whether or not we're going to stay here. But regardless of whether you don't move and you stay in that place of comfort in your in your mind, that place of fear in your mind, that place where you feel like I can't get out, that place where you feel like uh, I, I'm afraid to go somewhere. I just want you to understand you got to make your mind up today. Because I want you to understand, you've got to have some fellowship with your brothers and sisters. I ain't going to get no help, but I got to talk about it for just a minute. Amen. The church dies without fellowship. There has to be some fellowship. And we have made provision, certainly for the members of this church, to come into services, to just say hello, to sit in the house of God, to sit among the saints. These brothers decided we can sit here and die. We can go in and die. And look at what they said. They got in there and there was no man there. Nobody was there. In other words, when they got ready to go into that city, they made their mind up that they were going in. And they weren't concerned about the enemy. 
They weren't concerned about the famine. They were not concerned about the Syrians. They were going into the city because whether they set out there, they were going to die. But they made a decision to go into the city. Now, look at verse number six. And I'm going to ask you to put your uh, 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 find a couple of scriptures. We're going to look at these scriptures. and I'm going to talk to him, talk to you about them for just a minute. He says, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, lo, this is the Syrians, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Now, th- this is interesting because these were the enemies of Israel. And why would Israel get his, their enemies to go after their enemy? Wouldn't enemies be uh, 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 brought together to go against Israel? But let me show you what the Bible says about what God does to your enemies. I want you to go to Isaiah 59 and 9. Let's go to Isaiah 59 and 9. Isaiah 59. Oh, that may not be the right scripture, but I, that's the one I have. So that's the one. That's the one we're going. That's the one we're going. Uh, that's the one. That's not the scripture that I wanted. The one that I wanted. Uh, was was a little different but let's do this one it says therefore is judgment far from us neither do justice overtake us we wait for light but behold obscurity for brightness but we walk in darkness and that's not the scripture that I wanted the scripture that I wanted was when the enemy rush comes in like a flood the word of God will lift up a standard against them and so when we think about that we have to think about the fact that our uh, 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 when our enemies are against us, it is the word of God that gives us power over our enemies. It's the word of God that, that creates that, that, that barrier, that standard that is between them. But here was where Isaiah was giving instruction and letting them know, I need y'all to understand that, uh, therefore is judgment far from us. In other words, uh, even though, uh, uh, Elijah was in the midst of this famine that judgment was not on them that judgment was not uh, if you will uh, uh, on him because God was going to take care of him even though he walked in the darkness even though we were in the midst of the famine at that time God made sure he was going to take care of them and even in the midst of this pandemic I don't know about you but I have this assurance that God is going to take care of his people. And I know he will because I want you to understand it doesn't matter where we are. God has caused many of us to survive where we are right now. When you think about the more comorbidities that we have, those of us who have uh, uh, immune deficiencies and yet you are still here. Somebody ought to clap their hands for that because God has taken care of you. God has blessed you. He also goes on to say, he said, not only that, he says, neither do it justice overtake us. Why? Because we wait for light. In other words, we're looking for God to deliver us out of this. We're looking for God to bring us through this. I am not looking to die in this pandemic. I'm looking for God to bring us through. Somebody ought to say, man, I'm looking for God to watch this, to make sure, amen, even in the midst of what's going on, that we can take these masks off one day and smile at each other. That's my expectation that we're waiting for the light to come. God is going to make sure he gets us through this. Our enemies, on the other hand, they're not going to have that level of protection. But God will certainly protect us. Somebody ought to say amen. Go, if you will, to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Chapter 19. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 19 and 9. 59 and 19. 
Okay, you're 59 and 19. Let's look at 59 and 19. Watch this. Yes, he says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Michael. Amen. So when you when you hear that, when I see that, please understand they feared. Let me tell you, coronavirus fears Jesus' name. And I just want to let y'all know that when you call on that name, it's something about that name. The Bible says, if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders and anointing them and pray for them. And the sick shall recover. And if there be any sin, it shall be forgiven. I believe that word. And I believe that many people have been healed. Many people have been delivered because people have called on that name which is Jesus, and your enemies can't stand that name. Amen? Amen. Let's go now to Isaiah, uh, not Isaiah, but Psalm 68 and 1. Let's look at 60, Psalm 68 and 1. Psalm 68 and 1. When you get there, let's say amen. All right, let's look at 68 and 1. He says, let God arise... And let his enemies be scattered. And let them also that hate him flee from before him. I want you to understand what what you see in this text. That God doesn't create anything that he can drive your enemies out. By the sheer fact that God will move people out of your way by by his power. People will see you stronger than you are more powerful than you are because of God's power. And this is what happens in, in verse number six. It said the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear noise of chariots. They became fearful. They became nervous. And so they left everything. And watch this. Watch this. Verse number seven. Verse number seven says, Wherefore they arose and they fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp." as it was, and fled for their life. I want you to understand that uh, uh, this, virus is going to, this virus is going to be brought under control. God is going to see to it that his vi- this virus is going to be brought under control. But in the midst of this virus, God wants to bless and wants to prosper his people. Why, do, why are you saying that? I'm saying that because God will provide for us. Sometimes we feel like we're ostracized and rejected. But in the midst of times like these in which God does his best work in our lives. And we as the saints of God and as the people of God must be willing to receive every promise that God made. We cannot walk around fearing death. And this is what kept them out of the city before the famine was the fact of death. Remember what I said about the lepers. They had to stay six feet from anybody that didn't have leprosy. They had to have a mask on their face. And they had to cry out unclean. Today all of us got a mask. All of us got to stay six feet. And the reality is that six feet distance creates a level of fear when somebody gets within that six feet. It starts to, you want to push people out. And I've had that happen to me this week, and it was so funny. And I had to check myself before the devil got it, got his claws in me. I had to bind that spirit. I say, look, look, if I if I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this stuff because my kids always going somewhere working. My wife is working somewhere. Uh, uh, I'm I'm going in and out of places with a mask. I'm outside, and people around me are not wearing masks. But the reality is I had to tell myself, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. So I'm not going to let the coronavirus push me away. All right. I'm not going to let the coronavirus cause me to leave what God has promised. Somebody ought to say amen. And so watch this. It says, and when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence the silver, the gold and raiment. And went and hid it. I want you to understand something. This is a time that God really, a man wants to know who's going to go with him. If you know God is moving for you in the midst of this famine, your enemies are out of the way. This is an opportunity for you to prosper. 
God has a plan for you to prosper in this. And someone's saying, how, how do you get that from that text? Because guess what? Everybody was in the midst of that famine. Everybody was. It didn't matter. The ones who prospered was the one that got up and went in. Some of us need to go in. And go in where? We need to go into praise. We need to go into worship. We need to go into prayer. We need to go into fasting. We need to go into consecration. We need to go into the word of God. We need to go into uh, uh, faithful living. We need to go into a place where our minds are more focused on God than it is on what's going on around us. They believe that if they went into the city, death was inevitable. But they believe that if it was God's will... They would live if the Syrians chose to allow them to live. They believed that what 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 they were up against if they went into the city was no different than what they were up against if they stayed outside of the gate. And I just want to encourage somebody because people are wondering, well, I don't know what I'm up against. If I if I choose to to go back to work, if my kids go back to school, if they do, if your children been around children all this time. I don't understand if they've been running around and hanging out and hanging out with this friend and hanging out with that friend and going to this person's house and going to that person. My brothers and my sisters, we have a guy. Now watch this. Since we all in this pandemic, we all got to wear a mask and you haven't worn a mask. I want you to understand something. To sit where you are and wear a mask does not prevent you from dying. It just keeps you in the same category that everybody else is in. We're all in the pandemic. But if I get up with my mask and I go where I'm supposed to go, there's a blessing in it for me. There's prosperity in it. Amen. Amen. And so here, if you will, is where the lepers go in. And when they get in, they just don't go into, they go into this one tent and there's food there. In other words, there's provision. God will provide for us if we do what we're supposed to do. In the midst of the pandemic, we have to get up and stop looking for a handout. I know y'all don't want to hear that. I know that's not what y'all want to hear. I know that ain't what you want to hear. Some of us need a hand up, but some of us just don't want to go to work. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Because that makes me look like I'm Republican and I'm neither Republican or Democrat. I'm saved. Somebody ought to say amen. Y'all don't want to hear that. And, and I'm sorry, but I, I, that's where it fits. Because to be honest with you, if these lepers stay at the gate, they're going to die anyway because there's no food there. If they go into the camp where their enemies are, they're going to die anyway. But they got up and went into the camp and guess what? They have life and prosperity in the enemy's camp. Too many times we want to hide behind isolation, want to hide behind quarantine, and you don't get blessed in a quarantine. Many times these people were struggling. Can you imagine what was going on at this time in in, in, in this scripture? Let, 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 let's look at it. Let's look at it because I think it's important for us to understand what was going on. Amen. Uh, 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 some of the things that uh, uh, had taken place in here uh, prior to this uh, uh, Elijah said verse 32 in, in chapter 6 says but Elijah sat in his house and uh, the elders sat with him and the king sent uh, men from before him but uh, but ere the messenger came to him and said unto the elders see ye how the son of a murderer had sent had sent to take uh, away mine head, look when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door is not the sound of the master's feet behind him. And it says, and while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should what should I wait for? The Lord in what? Why should I wait? Or what should I wait for the Lord any longer? In other words, what he's saying: this famine is of the Lord, and some people want to kill the messenger. When the reality is, what we're in is because of God. It's because we may not have done what we should have done. That's why all of us look the same when we walk down the street. That's why all of us look the same when we go into the store. That's why all of us look the same. We all got. All you see is I. 
and you don't know who you're talking to. The reality is when God is purging and God is getting people ready, he brings about famine so that he can prosper those who are willing to go forward in the midst of the famine. You know how you would say, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to serve the Lord. I don't care what, what happens. I'm going on with the Lord. I don't care what comes my way. I'm going on with the Lord. And if, and if Barna Group is right, 30% of the folk who were going to church before the pandemic have stopped going to church, watching church altogether. They were going to church and 30% of the people who were going to church now no longer attend any church or watch any church because of the pandemic. So when we look at, get ready to close this lesson, let's look at this. He says, watch this. They looked and they fled. They go into the tent. They find food. They find something to drink. They look around. There's silver. There's gold and there's raiment. Remember, lepers have torn clothes. They have no possessions. They have nothing. But now they got good clothes. They got some silver. They got some gold. Maybe they can buy some salve to put on their leprosy to bring about some healing. Amen. They, 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 they're not naming. They can't run and dip seven times in the Jordan. They, 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 maybe they can find somebody. Now they got some money. They can try to buy their way into something. Y'all, are y'all listening? Y'all with me? Just, just follow me. Because now they have possessions they didn't have before they decided to go in. And if we don't go through this and go, come on, go into this and just say, you know what? I'm in this pandemic, but I'm getting through it. And I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to the church. I ain't talking too much to folk, amen, that don't believe God. I'm talking to folk that believe God. You cannot get deliverance, faith, strength, courage, or deliverance if you don't go in. I talked about this not long ago. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not delivered outside of the furnace. They were delivered when they went in. These four men did not know prosperity until they went in. And many of us don't know the prosperity that God wants to give us until we go in. Spiritual prosperity, natural prosperity, relational prosperity. God wants to give it to us. Then after they went through that tent, they came again and entered into another tent. And guess what? Carried out the same thing. They've been sitting out there all this time. And guess what? God did not do anything but put the, the rumbling and the bump of chariots, horses, and feet in the ears of your enemy. You've been wondering. Amen. You've been trying to figure out. How to get the advantage over your enemy. God done drove your enemy into isolation. And you still sitting at home worrying about your enemy. Y'all, come on here. Look, look. God drove the Syrians out. Only for four men to go in and prosper. Yes. That's it. That's right. And that's important. Brother Robert said, look what they did. They went shared it after that. That's correct. And there's something that God wants us to do. We have a responsibility after God has prospered us to make sure that we share and that we tell what God has done. Let me, let me, let me close. Verse number nine and say, they said one to another, we do not well. This is a day of good tidings. In other words, they were like, they paused for a moment and they thought about it. They said, hold on, just we, we, we're not really, we, we, we're not doing what we should be doing because this is a day of good tidings. And, and, and when he says we do not well, that's kind of interesting. You know, uh, that's why I understand why sometimes people struggle with the King James Version because, uh, in other words, what they're saying is, wait a minute, we didn't do what we should have done. We have eaten, we prospered, but we have not said thank you. We, we, we're in this thing 
and we got this whole camp, but we have not said thank you. This is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. I'm talking to all of the saints. I'm talking to all of the believers. I'm talking for all of the Christians. Why are you holding your peace? If this is the Lord's doing, then it ought to be marvelous in our sight. If God did this, then we ought to wear our masks with pride. Because even though the mask signifies I am associated with the virus, it does not, it does not determine that I am connected with God by his spirit. It only is a sign of association, but it is not a sign of what I am. Somebody ought to say amen. So these four lepers got to the point, they said, wait a minute. He said, we got to do something here. We, 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 got to, we, got to, we got to talk about this. We, got to, we, we, we can't just sit here, man. This is too good to hold on to. God has been too good to me in this pandemic for me to hold my peace. I need to tell my neighbor how good God has been to me. Amen. How God, God has blessed me. Because some of us have been tremendously blessed even though we have not been able to go to work. Our kids... We've got to know them better. We've got to know our wives better. We've got to know our husbands better. We've got to know our brothers and our sisters better. In the midst of this isolation, we thought that we were not going to prosper, but in it we have prospered. Can the church say amen? We've gotten better in this pandemic. Our lives have gotten better. Our hearts have changed. Our minds have changed. We're not as judgmental as we were before this pandemic because we went in. But there are some of us that still haven't gone in. And we need to come on and go in. Because you can sit at the gate and die or you can just come on and go in. There's prosperity in the pandemic. So here he says, if we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. In other words, he said, look, if we don't, if, if we don't do something, uh, we're going to lose ourselves in all this prosperity. <laughs> all this stuff we got, we're going to mess around, brother Rob. We're going to lose our minds because this is too much for all of us to handle. And everybody ought to look at somebody or, or just, just, just tag somebody and tell somebody, this is just too much to keep to myself. I, I, I got to tell you, God is really good to me. And it's not about the finances. It's about the fact that I got my right mind in the midst of this isolation, in the midst of this confusion and this, 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 this misunderstanding and the mixed signals and mixed messages that we've gotten. I'm still sane. Can you imagine how many people have been traumatized because... They couldn't go out. They couldn't do things. And I'm going I'm to tell you, some of it you saw and you see now. A lot of people that are out there that are doing that right, they are traumatized. Even though some of them are getting paid, they're traumatized. Folk fun that kind of crazy stuff. But there are some people that are really struggling mentally, but you still got your mind. You still got your health. You ain't, you, you ain't running to the liquor store because you feel you need a drink just so you can hang with your own self. Something wrong with that. Some people can't even hang with their own self. So they got a drink to just stay in their own company. This guy says some mischief will fall upon us or come upon us. He says, now therefore come that we might go tell the king's household. He said, hey, man, let's go, let's go, let's go back and tell the king. Say, hey, man, y'all, I just want y'all to know the Syrians are gone. And uh, uh, that whole uh, that whole camp is empty. There's, there's, there's cattle, there's asses, there's all kind of stuff over there. I just want you to know that uh, God has done some wonderful thing over there. Now, now I, I can tell you this. I don't know if they said what the Lord did for them. 
But I can show sure tell you they told him there's a whole lot left over there. Uh, y'all come on. Now I want you to understand something. They still lepers. They still lepers. But they still got to go in and say unclean, unclean. But I got a message. That the Syrians are gone. And the camp is full of food. The camp is full of possessions. You might want to go into the camp. You might want to just walk on into this pandemic and stop fearing what it can do to your body. And expect God to carry you through. Unexpected ways God provides for us. He prospers us in ways that we don't seem to expect. In this pandemic. There is a prosperous vein that only flows in God. We got to get in it because that is the only way we're going to have victory in this time. We cannot keep living as we did or thinking as we did in times past. We need to be like these four lepers. Those of us who are saved believers or Christians, we need to get up off of our seat of comfort comfort and tradition and tell somebody that God is able to keep me in this pandemic. There are people who are living in this time that have been exposed and not even know it. There are people who have been sick and recovered And that's because of the will of God has nothing to do with medicine. I believe it's because of the will of God. Medicine has a part to play, but we got to give God his just due. That's why he said we can't stay here. We can't just go through this and not tell somebody how good God is and not show how good God is. I encourage all of you. If your church building is open, try to get into a service just so you can be in fellowship and tell somebody how good God has been. Because we don't know if that may be the last time we get in. I'm not encouraging you to bombard and put a thousand people in the building. I'm asking you to try your best. Communicate with your pastor, communicate with, your, with, with those around you and find out how and what can be done. And if that can't be done, then you ought to just write a letter to your pastor and tell your pastor how good God has been to you in this time. Because guess what? Somebody needs to hear it. And if you write me to my members, if you write me or anyone writes me, What I'm going to do is I'm going to post them and put them on Facebook, on the church's Facebook site so people can read what God has done for you. Because that is the peace that will keep us going in this time. And until this is arrested, I encourage you, email, text, so that that information can be shared. So people will know that God is prospering in this un unexpected time that we live no different than he prospered these lepers God will prosper us amen let us pray father we thank you for the word of God today we thank you Lord that all of us are impacted but the message is that there is prosperity in the midst of the pandemic in unexpected ways you have always provided And sometimes we cannot hear the voice or the praises of the people of God. But Father, as we have opened up email and text, I'm asking, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of the people through text message, through email, to testify of what God has done so that these testimonies can be shared with the world so that people will know that there is prosperity in this pandemic. There is joy in this pandemic. There is hope in this pandemic. And there is peace in this pandemic. We are not going to die 
Lord, this is not going to kill us. This is not going to, this can't kill us because our souls will live forever somewhere. It may destroy our bodies, but it cannot destroy our soul. We need to be courageous. We need to walk into this time expecting an unexpected blessing. Father, keep us and we shall be kept. Bless us and we shall be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We trust that you enjoyed the lesson this